The original New Super Mario Bros. is strangely the most unique. As the series went on, it became pretty uniform. I mean, they've all got their own little twists, such as Wii adding full multiplayer, to having a buttload of coins, and you having a big old world map. But they found a comfortable template that makes them all just kind of blur together. But the original is actually really interesting to go back to. It shares a ton of assets with Super Mario 64 DS, which is probably why there's elements like the triple jump and the wall jump. But it also has enemies that aren't exactly Mario mainstays. Remember Scuttlebug? Funny little fella. There's a lot of completely unique ideas. Even the bosses are unique. The rest of the series just uses Koopalings over and over and over, and while DS just kind of supersizes regular enemies, they're still really cool and unique fights. This is a good game, but if you just played the core adventure, you didn't really use the DS's features at all. I mean, you can see how far you've gotten through a level, and you can use an item that you've got reserved, and sometimes when going underground, the bottom screen and the top screen switch. That's kind of neat. But for the most part, they focused on making a new Super Mario Bros. game rather than a game that justifies the entire purpose of the DS. Or did they? Because there's also a flip ton of mini games! Most straight from Super Mario 64 DS, but some brand new to new Super Mario Bros. These all use the DS's touchscreen to really make the hardware sing. Even the microphone for one of them. I can't tell you how many days I spent gambling with my buddy Luigi, snitching on the crew in a wanted lineup, drawing trampolines to bounce around. Rad stuff. But if you played alone, you only had access to 18 of these bad boys when there's an extra 10 available and playing with additional players. And just like how the minigames utilize the unique DS inputs, they also utilize one of the most interesting features of them all. Download play. Because DS games were usually pretty small, you could play with someone else who doesn't even own the game just by sending them data locally via wireless. And that's rad as flip! So let's go through some of the multiplayer exclusive mini games you may have never even seen or played. Snowball Slam! In this, you use the touchscreen to move Yoshi around, and by tapping, you can throw a snowball at the opposing player. Love me! This is a mini game from Super Mario 64 DS. Apart from there, it was single player, whereas now they've made it competitive. You pluck three petals at a time, and the last player is either loved or not loved. So it's a competitive fight to figure out if you're going to die alone or not. And don't worry, there's a lot of gambling exclusives in multiplayer. Speed is the same game as in real life. You've got to use the card you have to either go one higher or one lower than the card being dealt until a player runs out of cards. And who can forget Luigi's thrilling cards? This is Texas Hold'em. You can't see your own cards, you've got to bet on whether your hand is higher than your opponent's. Uh, gambling would give this a Peggy 18 rating today. Luigi's Jack is Blackjack. Basically, you want a bigger number than the other players without going over 21. Uh, we're just explaining card games now. Let's stop there. bob -omb Reverse is also in the casino area for some reason, and I guess that's because it's basically the board game reversey. You just need more bob -omb's of your color than your opponent, and you can flip them around and place them strategically. Jumping Brothers is basically the single-player game Bounce and Trounce, but with double the brothers and double the chaos. Likitu Launch has the same name as the single-player game Likitu Launch, but it's actually in a different setting and now a competitive game. bob -omb Trampoline is volleyball, but sometimes a bunch of bombs come in at once. And you've also got competitive versions of existing single-player games like Versus Paragon. Every single minigame is playable competitively. Sometimes they're turn-based, sometimes they're simultaneous and reaction-based. I'm gonna find Luigi first! Growing up, I only really played these games alone, but I was missing out. They're way more fun in multiplayer, and there's a bunch more to play too. Now, all that stuff is well and good. Actually, I think the minigames are some of the best parts of this game. But, what if I said there was one more thing? Would you call me a liar? You need to work on your trust issues. They had a core mode, a crazy amount of minigames played both competitively and on your own with some being exclusive to multiplayer, and then a competitive mode based around the main game. And if you never played this with a buddy, you may not even know what this looks like. This is Mario vs. Luigi. You play as either Mario or Luigi on one of five stages that all wrap around, kind of like Arcade Mario Brothers, but on a much bigger, side-scrolling scope. There's a pretty simple grass stage, an underground one with blocks to break, a slippery ice stage, one completely made out of pipes, and one is Bowser's Castle. In this mode, stars spawn at random, and you've got to race to them before your opponent can. 
There's options for how many stars a player needs to win, you can put on lives if you want to make it more of a death battle, but even if you don't do that, hitting your opponent makes them lose a star, so you're going to be beating on your friend regardless. This is such a cool mode that they didn't need to do. They didn't need all these minigames either. People would have been happy with just a standard ass Mario game, but this really elevates everything. I played a bunch of this with my buddy Ben Cowling, and it was non-stop laughter and betrayal. It also feels illegal not to have elements like the game slowing down when getting hit or collecting a power-up. Look at this. That ain't right. Snagging eight regular coins spawns a power-up, and fire flowers can be absolutely deadly. They don't shrink your opponent down, but they can very easily dwindle your stars down, and it's very scary to be chased by someone with a fire flower just on your tail the entire time. A superstar too. You better run if they have that. There's completely original music in here too, and it's funny to me that they made a unique music track that kind of fits snow levels in multiplayer, but in the main game it's just the regular ass overworld theme. Like listen to this, this is the normal one. And here's the multiplayer one. This would have fit this level so much better. Priorities though, this is just for the multiplayer exclusive mode. Now, while this is a ton of fun and has so many chaotic moments, it does become a little predictable after a ton of rounds. You'll start to get a feeling for where stars are going to spawn, which does take away a bit of the rush, and some levels, like the pipe one, eh, just aren't really as good as the others. It just feels very small and not very dynamic. But this is still an incredible little side mode in a game that was already more than packed. If you've got a few DS's lying around, or a DS and a 3DS, then force your friends to play with you. There's a whole flippin' Mario mode you may have never played before, and it rocks! I already respected the heck out of the DS game for its unique elements and ideas the rest of the series left behind, but digging through all the side modes, it's easily my favourite game in the series. New Super Mario Bros. DS is such a full game that brought Mario back to the side-scrolling scene for the first time in over a decade, without sacrificing anything in the name of hardware gimmicks, but then taking full advantage of the DS in any way it can everywhere else. If anyone disparages this game, it's because they lost big time in Luigi's Casino, and you should just feel sorry for them.